Alright, so hello. Today I figured I would give some tips on how to make uh, proper models for Minecraft. Minecraft modeling is something that, for mods there, Minecraft mods, um, which since uh, Forge started introducing the OBJ lo uh, loader and importer, uh, is something that Minecraft models have wanted to make use of. Uh, custom models in Minecraft opens up a lot of possibilities, a lot of really cool possibilities, and more or less for modelers uh, like myself, um, the sky's the limit. You can technically do sort of anything you want uh, in Minecraft now, model-wise. But whether or not you should is a, is a question I'm going to try and answer here. There are also some tips uh, you should probably follow uh, in, in doing Minecraft models that are very important to your success. And uh, to make it just look good in-game. Uh, Minecraft modeling is very simple. It's more or less like modeling low-poly stuff for... Uh, if you did any of the PS2 era, PS2 two Xbox generation gaming, it's a lot of very low poly sort of texture based uh, work, and it's kind of very interesting that way, and is something that uh, you'll need to take in mind. Now, this tutorial is not going to cover how to do basic modeling. This is not what this tutorial is for. I figured that I'm assuming with this tutorial that you have a basic knowledge of how 3D modeling works, and if you don't. Um, you know, you're probably not going to get too much out of this. If you do want me to make a basic tutorial on how, on how to make models, um, I could do that, let me know, uh, because Minecraft modeling, again, isn't very difficult. It's more the texturing and the UV mapping part that becomes uh, a bit more intense. So, to begin with, the first topic I want to cover is polygon count. Now, uh, let's not use this as an example here. This is probably a bad example. Uh, let's do this instead. So this here is something that probably a lot of you recognize. This is the original Power Suits armor model that I made a while back. And this sort of comes to show how sort of generous you could be with your polygon count in-game. So this here is a full 2,000 triangles, which is quite high um, for a Minecraft. This, I would say, is on the top end. But... A lot of people focus very much on do on polygon count when it comes to Minecraft models, and I don't think polygon count is extremely important. I've seen things that are up to fifty thousand polygons been imported into Minecraft and ran okay and you know fairly well. And I think that uh, as a general rule of modeling, and it applies to Minecraft modeling as well, uh, you want to keep in mind not to stress out over how important or how big your polygon count is while making the the, the actual model uh, you want to try and just follow your vision of how it's going to look and make it look good and then afterwards you can go in and optimize it that's how i work and that's how i think works best so you can be generous but you should probably try not to be generous um you like you shouldn't be overly like anything else you shouldn't overdo it right you shouldn't subdivide it eight times to make it a million polygons and then try and import that because that's just not, not gonna work and it's gonna look like shit so you want to be like reasonable you know you have to have common sense right so this here is on the high end of things as i said and this was the first proper 3d model i ever did for minecraft and it's because that uh, has a lot of sort of what I would call shitty elements to it. Um, and one of those is the next topic I want to talk about. And the next next topic I want to talk about is normals and smoothing groups. Smoothing, yeah, smoothing groups. Um, uh, for, for the 3DS Max crowd, again, smoothing groups. For the uh, Maya crowd, it's hard or soft edges. And uh, it's, it's generally normal angling, how normals are shaded. So in this model, you can see here right here, I'll take this chest piece as an example here. So you'll see that on this, the front, this front uh, section of faces, this face ring right here, is very smooth. It doesn't have a lot of shading on it, and it looks very smooth and nice. While there's a sharp edge going around the, the bit that enters the arm, and then it's smooth inside that. So this is basically two smoothing groups, right? This outer bit here is one smoothing group, and the in one is another one. This uh, makes your model, your model sort of look a lot smoother and may make it look a lot better. Uh, and it's a com technique commonly used in, in 3D and is very important to 3D modeling in general. And Minecraft doesn't support this. All Minecraft does is for every model you put in there, um, it basically makes them all hard-edged. Which I'm failing to do here. There you go. Makes them all look like this. And f this is one of the major reasons why a lot of round shapes don't work in Minecraft. Like, this model right here has some glaring issues, the first being the helmet. I'm really not very happy with the helmet. Uh, personally, some people do like it, I don't because of the fact that, again, while making it, I wasn't aware of the fact that Minecraft does normals this way. 
and you'll see what it, you see what it does with the helm right here. It facets all of the faces and makes it look very, very um, bad, basically, simply put. And so this is something you want to take in mind. You don't want to do even things like these these wrist things right here. Because they they have so many sort of turns and twists to them, they look very polygon-esque. They, they look very uh, polygonal. And obviously, while you have when you have these textured, if we turn the texture back on, that doesn't look too bad, right? But uh, the helmet still does. Again, you want to keep this from a minimum. But that's why a lot of round shapes don't work. Uh, in general. And polygon count wise, if we get back to that point, uh, there's a lot of things you can do after f after the fact, after you've made the model, uh, to optimize it. Again, I'm jumping topics here a bit. I'm sorry about that. I don't have this amazing planned out. But uh, to optimize a model, because uh, Minecraft's models are more or less all of the time static, there's no deformation going on in Minecraft models basically anywhere. It's just rotation all this so basically when while this is an armor model and things move in this armor when you say run in minecraft um uh, it doesn't deform and what i mean by that is if we say move the um if we take this right so what happens is when this animates all that happens is this arm bit rotates like that that's all that happens no none of the bits change none of the bits move it simply is rotated by a joint and you know what that all that stuff what this means is that every face you don't see when the model is like this, you do not, you do not need to have. So for an example, uh, this helmet doesn't have a bottom to it, like this, it just ends right there. This is because these tubes cover the bottom of it, therefore it's not going to be shown, and therefore I don't need any faces there. And another good example of this, uh, quite a few ones here, I believe I have a jetpack thing right here, here you are. So this here, um is a good example. Actually, I have a better example here. Give me a second. I'm going to look through my horrible uh, folder structure here. So this is quite a good example. Okay, so this this here is a jetpack model. I did not make this. I'm claiming to have done that. It looks really cool. Um, and uh, it's something that I helped someone UV map. But uh, it shows what I'm trying to pull through here quite well, I believe. So you see, they, it's built up on all of these different sort of cube-like shapes, right? But um, they're intersecting a lot. That means that a lot of bits of these cubes aren't shown, which means that these bits are unnecessary. So you can see this bit right here, this big front bit, has some bits on the front which are shown, which is fine. The sides are shown, which is fine. The back, however, is split into three phases. If we take this, move it up a bit, you can see that it's one, two, three. And if you remember from looking at it like this, this middle one isn't shown at any point in time. It's a completely unnecessary detail to have there, and it doesn't make any difference. So what we can do is we can go in and we can delete that, and therefore have already removed a free polygon. It's never going to be shown. Um, be happy with it. The same thing with these. If you look at these. They don't have an inward face here because this is not shown at all. So it's it's completely unnecessary detail. It takes up space in your UV window, in your UV map, and it eats up polygon count, obviously. Same thing with these, just to show a point, they have no inward face because it's never going to be shown. So this is something you want to go in after you've done your model or maybe while doing it, you know, whatever you prefer, and delete all the faces that aren't shown. Unless you're doing a very edge edge case when you're somehow deforming something in Minecraft, which I have yet to see, uh, this applies. You want to keep this in mind, and it's a very important thing to do so. So another thing I want to cover is another reason why you want to keep things very square. Now one of the reasons you want to keep mo Minecraft models very cube-like is because of the general Minecraft aesthetic to things. Uh, the Minecraft aesthetic is very low-res things that are very cube-like. <laughs> you know, surprise, surprise, right? Uh, but there are multiple reasons for this. One of the reasons was, was the one I mentioned earlier with normals, because it hardens all the edges on all the normals. Uh, round shapes simply don't look round, they just look shit. So therefore you shouldn't use that, that's a big no-no. But also, um, there are reasons for this UV mapping was. And UV mapping is a topic I'm going to cover a bit of here, because it's quite a big topic. So, why do you want to keep things cube-like while UV mapping? Well, because the textures you want to use in Minecraft are going to be so low res, often in you know the 64 by 64 area for big, bigger models, or maybe even less than that, uh, possibly going up to 128 by 128, uh, you need to be very careful with how you manage your pixels. 
Um, I'm going to try and explain this to the best I can, but I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to, but hopefully I'll be able to manage to describe this to you in a good way. So here's the texture I made for this model right here. This is a very simple robe. This is using a 64 by 64 texture. Very simple. Uh, I think it looks, you know, alright. I think it fits the Minecraft aesthetic again, and it looks decent. So this is the UV map right here. The first thing you'll notice here is that I try to keep things very, very square, and very squared off. And I also try to align things to this grid I have here. I'm not sure how it works in other 3D software, again, I mostly use Maya, I've used other software in the past, but they have changed so much in the years that have passed without me using them that I barely know them anymore uh, at all. But in Maya, you can change the size of this UV grid, and what I've done, and what I do for these textures, and for these UV maps, is that I change the size of these grids uh, to match uh, the pixel size and the resolution of the texture map, so in this case, um, this is actually wrong because this is uh, kept from uh, another model I did. But um, so in this case, this, these grids are set up where each grid square is a pixel in a 128 by 128 texture. And the way I did that was simply I, in my, I go to view here in the UV window, you go to grid, you go to the options for the grid, and then you have grid lines every so and so units. And what you do here is very simple. You take a calculator out, and since the max values here are one on each side, it's a one by one square, uh, one by one unit square. Uh, you just take one and then divide it by whatever square resolution you have. So if you have a 64 by 64 uh, texture, you want to divide one by 64, and then you put the number in here. And that gives you basically a 64 by 64 uh, pixelated so and so uh, called. Uh, grid and then you, what you want to do is you want to sort of align your UV shells with the grid So you can see that the edges of this UV shell perfectly are aligned with the edges of the grid and I did this because I knew I wanted to have uh, a full pixels border around the 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 edge here. not necessarily because I wanted it in the texture but because it makes it look more coherent and having just say if if this here was over here you would only fit half a, a pixel on this space and therefore it would look weird and cut off so if you have a full pixel it matches the rest and obviously I have some issues here with this not being aligned um, I believe I did this because stretching uh, stretching is something you want to really keep in mind when you're mapping as well um, but I would say you want to prioritize this pixel management is what I sort of tend to refer to it as um, over stretching so again you can see here on this this row bit of the model you can see that I have a straight pixel edge here uh, showing, uh, sort of defining the front of this map, this mesh, and I think that looks quite good. And this is often something I do with pixel art, I suppose, or pixel texturing, uh, and it's one of the reasons why keeping a pixel edge like this is like this is very important. And this is something I've only realized as of late, and uh, that I haven't realized. Uh, that it took me a while to realize, basically. I feel I share it to people. And why you don't want to keep things round or in angles. Uh, like say this here um, is a good example, this hood here, you'll see that uh, on the, along the bottom of the hood, if we isolate it, we have this line here, which I figured looked sort of like stitches or something like that, that's why I managed it to look like, and it's low risk goodness, uh, but when we come to the edge here where there's a diagonal line, you can see what I had to do with the pixels to kind of emulate a line. It doesn't really work. In in low res stuff like this, making diagonals just doesn't look good. And because that's simply the reason why you don't want to keep things very angular. Because to make this edge straight in the UV window, you have to present a shit ton. And another, I really mean a shit ton of stretching. And stretching isn't good. It makes your texture on the model uh, misrepresent what you made in the image editor. That's not something you want. So... Basically, here's the here's the bit I'm talking about. See, this this bit right here is the side uh, angle of this hood, and just because it's an angle like this, you can see the grid lines sort of show off this quite well. Uh, there isn't a single line of pixels going through it, and therefore you have to do some zigzagging sort of staircase style lines, which don't quite look good enough to make a line themselves, and it's something that's very annoying when texturing. And that's another point I want to bring up when UV mapping, is that UV maps should more or less always be done by the person texturing whatever it is you're doing. And it's something that I've fallen prey to in the past. I haven't always done uh, the textures for the stuff of UV maps. And it's a mistake that I think people should learn to avoid. Because texturing is such a dynamic process that if you're giving a UV map by someone else, 
uh, you generally have to work through a lot of kinks and try and work around some of the stuff that that person decided to put in the UE map and how they decided to lay it out in order to make your texture. Whereas if you yourself was able to UV map it properly, you could then adapt the UV map while doing it uh, to fit your texture you needs. Like personally, I knew I needed a straight edge here when I was UV mapping. I sort of pictured how I'd wanted the texture to look in my mind, and I knew that I wanted the edge around this this front bit of the robe. So I knew I had to do these lines. And I had to align them to the pixel grid uh, in order to make things work. And um, I also knew that since since it was going to be low res like this, I had to keep everything as straight as possible, and uh, I had to have a good amount of spacing between my UV shells, otherwise uh, my pixels may overlap from one shell to another, another and not actually work um, texture-wise. So again, it's something you want to keep in mind if you're doing the UV mapping of an object, you should probably do the texture as well, and if you're texturing, if you're a texture artist for 3D, you should probably I, I consider UV mapping a vital skill um, in your arsenal that you should learn. Obviously, that's very subjective, but it's something I think you should take in mind. And I think it's quite important. And I believe the last thing I'm going to finish off is quite a light note here. Uh, I'm just going to remind you that UV, that alpha maps exist, and they exist in Minecraft as well. They're very easy to make, and they work fantastically well in Minecraft. They're used all over the place for things like vine and grass. They're all planes with alpha maps and transparency. And you don't want to be afraid to use them. And something that I'm demonstrating wildly with this mod right here. So this, you can see, is a... <laughs> It's a good example of what you can, I suppose, do with transparency if you really want to. This is a joke model I did, a uh, sort of camouflage armor thing that may, may be used somewhere, I'm not sure. I kind of want to put this in um, as an armor alternative in, in, in Power Suits, just because it sounds fun. But again, I don't know, something I did in a few minutes that uh, I think looked quite funny. So You can see what I'm doing right here, if we turn the texture off, you can see exactly how the model looks, and it looks very, very, very strange. There are a lot of planes and alpha texture and transparency planes uh, that make this look very, very weird without a texture, but with a texture, and with an alpha map, you see what happens, and it looks actually fairly reasonable, right? So this is something you kind of want to take in mind. I think this is something that uh, is very fun. Alpha maps are very fun, always, because it's a way to sort of introduce a lot of detail into something that otherwise uh, you couldn't do without adding a shit ton of polygons and terrible edge flow. And I think that's a very important thing. <laughs> I think you can do some really cool things if you try to alpha maps, and I, uh, I'm i still learning uh, <laughs> when it comes to Minecraft's ability to to deal with them. So that's sort of the last thing I want to remind you of. Again, uh, I, I probably missed a few things. I might make more of these as I learn more about Minecraft modeling. It's very... Very interesting making models for Minecraft, uh, because while it's not very skill intensive, not very difficult, there are some things that you really do want to keep in mind, and hopefully I covered some of them here today. Again, if you have any uh, opinions on this, any questions, or if you want me to like suggest something else for me to like doing a basic tutorial on modeling or something like that, because I know a lot of mod makers themselves want to make uh, models for their own mods, uh, which I've heard a lot of talk about. Uh, you know, I can do some of the basic tutorials as well. I just wanted to get these tips out there because I see a lot of models that kind of aren't, um, they don't use these and look a bit strange because of it. And, you know, some of them are made by me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I'm trying to uh, get better at this. So, again, very, very kind of interesting stuff, really, making most of Minecraft. And uh, it's something that uh, it doesn't compare to usual modeling with all the normal maps, specular maps, and uh, diffused luminosity maps, and every type of map in the world, and high poly counts and high res textures, um, goes very fast. It, Minecraft modeling is very quick, and in a lot of ways easy. Uh, you just need to sort of keep some stuff in mind. Again, you can see the alpha texture showing through here. There's some holes here which aren't actually there. This is a single polygon. You can see it colors up quite well, but again, it doesn't look like it. Uh, with the alpha. So, again, that was that. Uh, I think I covered everything I wanted to in this video. Hopefully this helped some of you. Um, and I hope I wasn't too quick. I might have been. I tried to squeeze this in under a sort of a reasonable time frame to not kill you all. But, yeah. So, thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll be back later with some of this. Uh, but, yeah. That was that. Bye.